My brother-in-law is a counselor and he likes the idea of this time cube timer which instead of presenting a attention grabbing ticking clock subtly changes color as the session progresses to remind you of the passage of time. But uh, this thing is from the UK and you need to pre-order it and wait for them to make a batch and then ship it and it gets rather expensive so he asked me if I could build something like that. So I thought this would be an opportunity to make an actually useful Raspberry Pi Pico project except I'll be using this Waveshare Raspberry Pi Pico variant which has already got a color LED on there so all I have to do is hook up some buttons and write some software so simple right? I'm not quite sure where this printed circuit board came from but it's got some buttons on it so I actually just uh, cut this part off and wire those buttons onto my uh, Pi Pico variant. And now with some software on this thing if I push this button that runs through the sequence uh, much faster than it would in actual sessions. So first it goes to teal and I'll just put this on as a diffuser to make it easier to see. And then after halfway it goes to yellow and for the last five minutes it goes to red. And after that it blinks in purple to remind that we're over time. Now an actual session would last about an hour and that's way too long to show in real time in a video. Now when it switches colors from one to the next uh, that sudden change is actually kind of attention catching which I don't want so I'll make it fade. So I wrote some code to linearly change the color from one to the other but that wasn't very satisfying so now I actually take the square root of the uh, color values and then vary those linearly and then program the square of that and actually do all this in integer math because the Pi Pico doesn't have floating point hardware. So now if I push the button it fades very gradually from one color to the next. They're going to yellow, now fading to red, and then for overtime it blinks purple. But I realized this internal LED might not be bright enough so I bought some LED strips with the same kind of LEDs on there and uh, I have a strip of four of these and if I click on these these are actually quite bright even with a diffuser in front. With the electronics all figured out now I just need some kind of enclosure for it and that's more of a woodworking project so I already covered that on my main woodworking channel. I have two wooden buttons on the top which just push on buttons on the little PCB that's mounted in here. Pi goes on the bottom, there's a light diffuser on the front with a plexiglass window in front of that. Then the lights are going to mount on the back panel. So since I'm no longer using the onboard LED, I'm using a regular Pico now. Buttons wired up and if I push those, the LEDs do their thing so now I can solder wires to the one that's actually going to go in the box. All wired up. Now I can assemble the box. So the left button starts a 60 minute session and the right button starts a 90 minute session and both together cancels. But I've got other combinations so for instance if I do left down, right down, left up, right up that tests all the LEDs individually or if I do left down and then tap the right that does a very short uh, 20 second session or right down, left down, right up, left up puts it in crazy blinking attention catching mode and there's so much more I could do with uh, different button combinations to trigger different modes because <laughs> I've got a dual core 100 megahertz ARM processor on there but uh, the whole idea of the whole thing is not to catch a lot of attention it's just supposed to be a subtle reminder of time so keep it simple. Now I just said keep it simple but the fact is I've got 500 lines of code in this thing now. Now I've been finding it really useful to hook up different sensors to Raspberry Pi computers like uh, these temperature sensors or this cheap DHT22 temperature humidity sensors, relay boards, this is an AMD converter board that I hooked up for a Pi anemometer with a Raspberry Pi interface, this one's got a thermocoupler wired onto it for measuring really high temperatures in the stove, or here with my strength testing apparatus which has got a load cell amplifier presently hooked up to an extra load cell here as well as wires going from here to a stepper motor driver to drive the stepper motor plus connection to a switch right here to sense when it's down or this one right now hooked up to a Geiger counter or this one which I haven't used lately hooked up to a long wire with uh, temperature humidity pressure sensors and a dust particle counter. So I've been buying all kinds of gizmos to hook up to my Raspberry Pi computers and there's more that I still want to buy. So wouldn't a kit of these make sense? 
So when Elecro offered to send me their Raspberry Pi Pico Advanced Kit, I thought, hey, sure, that would be really useful. Now, this isn't really a sponsored video because all I got is the free kit. Uh, I guess their profit margins aren't that high for sponsoring because they don't charge that much for the kit. And aside from the uh, Pico, some breadboards and wires and a screwdriver, it comes with a whole lot of stuff. Some of it's kind of useless, like this uh, traffic light module thing, but other things that I've been thinking of getting, like this motor driver module, uh, display module, a joystick module, infrared receiver, um, sound sensor actually I already got and never used, motors, another LCD to use, uh, DHT11. Those sensors are actually kind of junky. Um, and basically all kinds of useful stuff, good deal for the price. It also comes with this uh, car kit where you can build uh, basically a sort of a robot car and make it follow lines and stuff like that. You might build that someday. And it also comes with uh, 32 projects that you can build with sample code, but that's all in MicroPython, which I've been kind of resisting out of principle so far. But I thought I should at least try it given that they sent me the kit. So uh, this is their uh, servo example. And if I run that, it just actually uploads that to RAM. And I've already modified this, so this just uh, does a funny sequence with the servo, just hooked up straight to the Pico. And the way MicroPython works is you upload this 300 kilobyte blob, which is basically the Python interpreter, and then you run an IDE like Thani, and that uploads your files typically into RAM while you're developing, and into the Flash as a file system when you're actually running Python code that you want to leave on there. And this big blob contains the interpreter, but also a whole lot of libraries, including a file system, so it's like the interpreter is its own OS because it's essentially Python running on bare metal. And so that part I find really cool because essentially Python becomes the OS because uh, when I'm programming this thing in C, I really miss having an OS on there sometimes. Of course, you get a huge performance hit by running MicroPython instead of C, but the thing is fairly fast, so even the interpreted MicroPython will still be faster than assembly language was on a Commodore 64. And when I was using Wi-Fi on the uh, Pico W using the LWIP library in C, man was that ever a pain in the ass to use. So I looked up MicroPython for the Pico W and the code blob you have to upload is three quarters of a megabyte in size. So that uses up quite a lot of the two megabytes of flash that's actually on the device, but I've never really written huge Python scripts. But it's no surprise really because network stacks are complicated and since Basically, MicroPython is the OS for you. It's no surprise that the upload is that much bigger. But even if you only use the full Raspberry Pis, not the uh, Pico, I think this kit is actually just a good source of a random grab bag of parts, and you can always find code online for driving some of these things. But the main takeaway for me from this is uh, MicroPython is actually kind of neat. And since so much of my stuff is just running experiments, uh, Python is usually just fine for it. And with the uh, Pico being as fast as it is, okay, it's only a tenth of the speed of a Raspberry Pi, um, it basically is fast enough for most things with MicroPython. And the kit is this one. I'll put a link in the video description.